Hello everyone, this is Robert and this is Lolo Man version 2. I am very excited to be doing this video because it means this project is done and this has been one of the most challenging builds I've ever done. So I'm really happy to be done with it. So in this video, I'm going to show you what's changed from the previous version, some of the little tricks that I ran into, and then uh, we'll pop off the top and see what's inside. So let's get started with what is Lolo Man. So this is the new Lolo Man version 2. Lolo Man is a three pound beetle weight combat robot. And it might not look like a traditional combat robot. The idea for this started out as how low or how thin can I make a robot? And to my knowledge, this is probably one of the thinnest robots out there. Uh, if I take off the base, you can just kind of get an idea of how thin it is. The actual chassis itself here is 14 millimeters thick. The wheels extend three millimeters top and bottom. So from the floor up to the very tippy top of the wheels is 20 millimeters. From the floor to the top of the frame is 17. And then the cavity inside is only 10 millimeters. And that's where all the guts fit inside. It doesn't really have a weapon per se, but it does have a wedge on the front. So that is kind of, you know, its defense. Being that it is 12 wheel drive, it actually has a pretty decent drive and can push around just about anyone. And the new change this year is the wedge is actually articulating. We'll get into that in a little bit. Um, overall size of the bot, um, we're about 10 by eight and a half. If you add in the wedge, we're about 10. So it's about 10 by 10 roughly. So yeah, that's kind of the um, overall specs of it. We're actually running 12 wheel drive with a custom ESC. And then we also have two more motors inside for the linear actuators. So we are running 14 motors and a total of eight channels worth of ESCs inside this little tiny thing. So it's pretty interesting stuff. So um, let's just uh, pop this open and see what's inside. If you're familiar with the previous version of Lolo Man, you might notice quite a few changes. The biggest change is this one uses a full clamshell design, where the other one just kind of had an access panel. The access panel was really problematic because it only had six screws holding this very thin panel in, and when I'd get hit with a vertical, it would kind of tweak that panel and it would kind of pop off of the uh, countersinks that were holding it in place. The full clamshell will hopefully improve that. However, the downside to going with a clamshell is I need a lot more fasteners. The last one used six fasteners. You can kind of still see the original locations. It was one, two, three, four, five, six. So those six points held in the access panel and they were uh, 632. I've moved up to 832 and I've got, uh, I think, 12 or 14 screws now holding the whole thing together. So there is a lot more holding it. And then I also have a lot more of these pegs or pins um, holding everything together. So hopefully the clamshell should be a little bit more stout. And when this thing is together, it just feels like an absolute brick. Um, it feels like a solid block, which is kind of nice. So there's a lot to talk about inside this. So let's start with these outside modules, which are the drive modules. They are very similar to last time in that they just kind of pop off. They sit on these little pegs. There is a magnet right there, which has a pocket or a divot through. And that is what this fancy little stand is using. The stand just keys off of the magnets and allows me to set this on a flat surface without all the wheels popping up. So just kind of a little convenience thing. The big difference between these drive modules and the old ones are the motors. 
the last ones used N20 motors, which you can see right there, and the new ones use a new N30 motor. It is 10 more than the other one. Um, it just has a slightly longer motor cam on the outside, and I did a test in a previous video on these, and I found that I'm getting about 30% more torque, and then the speed on these is about 20% faster. So theoretically, uh, Lolo Man will have about 25% more speed with the proportionate amount more power. So hopefully that will be um, better for pushing and actually getting it around the arena because this was relatively slow last time. I would like to it to be just a little bit faster. So that's the difference in the actual drive modules. The battery remains the same. I'm using the same um, ESC and controller. I'll pop that off. And then this up here is the new linear actuator module, which we'll get to next. Um, but let me start by just uh, popping this off and showing you the electronics underneath this access panel. So to get to the electronics, there's just two screws that go directly into the plastic, and this is just kind of like a little cover panel to hide everything. So we pop that up, and then you can see the electronics inside. Um, we've got the Lolo Man um, ESC that was custom developed with NBOTS. It's based on their DESC, but it is a six channel with an integrated power switch LED, and then the um, radio goes straight into it. That goes straight into the battery, of course, and then right here we have a Scorpion Nano. Um, that is driving the two linear actuators up top, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight channels total. And then you can see the LED is just kind of held right there, so where's, where's my power switch? Yeah, there you go. So the LED is just kind of um, recessed in there a little bit and with the cover panel on it shines through nice and simple. So yeah, this is just a cover panel to consolidate everything and make things prettier. So now let's look at the linear actuators because those are kind of interesting. And here is the front with the linear actuator module. You can also see the radio wire kind of sticking out the front. There's a little channel in the bottom for that so it's not completely encased in the aluminum. So take off this little access panel. For anyone that is really paying close attention, you might notice that these two plastics are different. Um, everything in here is nylon X, except for these two pieces because they are crazy thin. This is only one millimeter thick, and the nylon X tends to warp a lot. So these are both PLA. So if we take that off, you can see the linear actuator module. Um, so we have a right angle N20 motor, into these plungers. I call them plungers. There's a um, threaded insert in the back of that that rides along the threaded shaft. And then we have two limit switches. Make them click, click, click. And then there are diodes on here. So this is a full true linear actuator so that when we drive the motor and it pushes the plunger out, this little nub will actually interfere and hit the end stop switch that will um, turn on or put the um, diode into series with the circuit and it will prevent it from further moving out but it will still allow it to drive backwards. So let's turn this on. I'll kind of give you an idea what that looks like. It's <laughs> uh, this whole thing took quite a bit of time to figure out as you can imagine. So if I drive this forward they drive out until they hit the end stops, but I can still drive them backwards. And that amount of travel is enough to interact with the wedge, which I will show you later. Not a lot of travel. Um, the main reason is because this thing is so thin, it really can't push out that much because it's affecting Man, this is really hard to explain without a diagram, but there's just not much travel that's needed to push out the wedge because it's just kind of like a cam mechanism. So, yeah, and then the radio sits inside here in its own little home. And another couple little points, you might notice that there's little um, pieces on the back here. These have a screw right there and right there. These come out and allow the uh, motor to actually pull out because there's no real other way to get these motors in and out unless they have some kind of rear access. So there's one main piece, these access panels, then the two micro switches, then the diodes. There's a lot of pieces in here. 
And you can see that the uh, micro switches, I didn't really have a great way of mounting them. So I've got dowel pins that are pressed into the body of this. And those line up with this access panel like that. So pretty interesting stuff. Uh, let's get this uh, put back together and I'll show you how the uh, wedge works. So this front lip of Lolo Man is where all of the attachments go. And I've got a few different attachments. Um, the primary one is just this articulated wedge that goes off of the linear actuators. You can see I've got like one, two, three little uh, divot cutouts on the top and then they're mirrored on the bottom. So these um, little pieces, not that one, this one. These little um, 3D printed pieces kind of um, crisscross, right? One goes on top, one goes on bottom, and they just kind of sit in there. Couple different purposes for these. One, when you screw these together, it holds the um, front of the clamshell tight. You can see there's six fasteners across this front, but only two on all the other sides. So I want a little bit more clamping pressure across this front lip. And of course they act as the attachment point for the wedge. So all we have to do is just kind of slide these on. It's easier said than done. Here we go. Slide these on, put the fasteners through, and we have a nice little articulating wedge. And because it's mirrored, um, you know, we can flip it upside down, whatever. Um, so let me attach this and I'll show you how the um, lifting wedge actually works. Since we're down here, let's talk about the underside of the wedge. As you can see, we've got three magnets on the underside, which corresponds, well, I guess, works in conjunction with the three other magnets that are on each side. So overall, this thing is giving about, about three pounds worth of downforce with the um, wedges or the magnets on the wedge. And these can be very easily removed. I can do two of them, I can do one of them. I can do none of them. Um, they're just kind of adjustable and they do help keep this wedge down to the ground because if this wedge isn't on the ground, then what's the point of this whole thing? So there we go. Let's turn on the radio. There we go. And so if I move the stick on the radio up, you can see the wedge move up. I'll do this from the side. doesn't move a lot. I think it's about an inch or so. Um, the idea behind this is it should be just enough to break someone's magnets free or just kind of high side them a little bit. With Lolo Man being so low to the ground, I have an issue with people just driving right over top of it like a speed bump. So the idea is if I pin them, okay, it's really slow. I can lift them up just enough to where now they're a little bit high sided. Now I can maybe carry them around. So it's just enough. And um, if you saw my previous video in the demonstration, you can see that I can lift maybe about four pounds with this wedge. So it's not crazy powerful. It's not crazy fast, but hey, it is an articulating wedge on a 14 millimeter thick robot. So I'm pretty happy with that. And it is just kind of a nice little added feature. The other nice thing is this will allow me to get over floor seams because I can just kind of lift this up a little bit. So right now it's just, you know, a few millimeters off the ground and I can kind of adjust it. So I could theoretically use this to get over floor seams if I wanted. Previous version of Low Low Man had a lot of different front end attachments. I kind of had like a a uh, big bar that was just meant to get hit, but I realized that getting hit in the front really just isn't what I want to have happen. So I had a couple different wedges and wedgelets. I've opted to just stick with the classic wedge. This wedge design has worked out quite well for me. The only variation that I wanted was the ability to actually catch people. So if we take this off, 
you can see that I have the standard, I call these wedge nubs, we have the standard wedge nub, but then we also have this one, which has these little hooks in it. Uh, let's see if I can get this on camera, yeah. So it's got these little hooks up front, and these little hooks will ride the same way as the other ones, but when the wedge is on there, when you ride up the wedge, it will just kind of hook against that little um, nub right there. These are only to be used, side view, yeah. These are only to be used with um, bots that I'm certain I'm not gonna get flipped upside down because this will high side me a little bit. But if there is another wedge that's playing the wedge game, this will make sure that that wedge kind of climbs up and then hooks and then I can push them around. So I can use one of these in the middle. I can use one of these on all three, maybe just on one side if there's a strategy to be had there. Um, but I can replace these standard nubs with one of these hooked nubs. This last attachment is a bit unique and I actually had to back the camera up for it a little bit. There's a lot of kind of strange geometry bots. I think, you know, Lolo Man is one of them. So what if I have a large robot like Wumbo, for instance? Well, I've got an attachment for that. This is <clears throat> the keep away bar. This is very reminiscent of what Hydra used against Huge um, on BattleBots. It is a very large structure that comes about six inches up off of Lolo Man and spans 18 inches wide and it is just a keep away bar. So the idea is if you have someone with large wheels that you can just kind of corral them and push them. And with ARC having a pit, this is a great attachment because I can just push them around and then hopefully after two minutes just shove them in the pit. This was a bit of a challenge to make. It uses the same front um, attachment points and is just this carbon fiber structure with a large aluminum beam up front. And it is just, you know, almost as big as Lolo Man itself. And it just kind of snaps right onto the front, screws in place like all the other attachments. The downside to this is I do have to lose the linear actuator module because I need that extra weight for the aluminum bar. The good news is everything is modular inside, so I literally just unplug it, unplug it from the receiver, and that whole module just lifts out, and I save about 70 grams worth of weight. So I'm really curious to see how this works out. This was just kind of one of those late night, oh no, I need something against Wumbo, so I threw this together, so we'll see how this actually works out. But I think it ends up looking really cool. It's like a big spoiler for it, but Lola Man isn't that fast, so yeah. That is all the attachments for Lolo Man V2. So yeah, that is the overview for Lolo Man V2. I'm pretty happy with how this thing turned out. We'll see how it fares in combat. By the time you're watching this video, the competition's probably already gonna be over, so be sure to be on the lookout for the fight recap and all that good stuff. So as always, thanks for watching. Check me out on my Facebook page and definitely check out my new Instagram feed. I've got a lot of um, neat little goodies on there. So um, yeah, thanks for watching. See you in the next video and wish Lolo Man good luck.